Hello there! Today I'm going to review the Benro BV6 kit. You can find the full specifications of the kit on screen and in the description below, so I'm not going to waste your time reading them out loud. But let's get started. I'm going to focus my review on some of the cons as opposed to the pros as they are quite evident, so here we go. Here you can find three clips that hold the legs together when the tripod is packed. Unlocking them is simple and easy. The tripod is equipped with a twist locking mechanism that is easy to operate, and once released gravity will lower the leg most of the way, anyway. Here we find the first con, as we cannot fold away the leg locking clips, and having a hook that is ready to latch onto the first thing in its way is a bad thing when it's attached to a tripod that holds expensive equipment. Then we move on to the mid-level spreader. <sighs> Where should I start? Well, it's easy to operate the locks and get an accurate reading as it's marked so you'd never have to guess where it was or where it should be opened at. And that's about all the pros that I can think of about this spreader. I mean, why did Benro opt to use this kind of spreader when it's kind of useless and flimsy? I mean, there is no way to lock it in place to help it aid rigidity. And I only brought this up because they do actually sell a mid-spreader model, the ML08, that is lockable and miles ahead of this one, yet it's not compatible with these legs. So I hope that they come out with a newer model soon that is compatible. Anyways, moving on. Keeping this tripod to the ground is its trusty rubber feet. They're wide and articulating, which is a good thing for grip. Now taking off the rubber feet, which are held on very tightly with the heavy duty rubber band, will reveal a dual spike system that will come in handy in a variety of situations. And since I'm on the carpet in my room, I kept the spikes out for the next test. Here you'll find me panning the head left and right just to give you an idea on how flexible the legs are when fully extended. I mean, I don't have a heavy camera set up. In fact, that's the main reason why I got the BV6, which has a 6 kilogram load capacity, making it good for a light setup and good for future proofing. Anyways, I'm only panning the head empty here, and I also tried it out with my setup and it's about the same. And since we're on the subject of panning, the head itself comes with four drag settings to choose from. Well, three really, as the first one is just zero, as in no drag at all. Anyways, the drag itself is very smooth, and I cannot find any fault in it. But on the other hand, I don't have any other video head that is a real cartridge-based fluid head to compare it to. Setting the head to its max drag will cause the legs to lift off the ground before the head moves. But that's okay, because with the weight of the camera, that setting might work just fine. And now we move on to the QR plate system, which is a Manfrotto 501-504 PL type sliding plate that comes with an easy to use locking knob to the right of the head and a security release button to the left that will prevent the QR plate from sliding off the head accidentally. Yes, it's a must have, but it is kind of stiff to operate. And actually, this might be a good thing as we don't want it to get released accidentally with just a light touch. And last but not least, the illuminated leveling bubble. It stays on for 10 seconds after pressing it, leaves nothing to be desired. Which is not what I can say about the head's own build quality, as you can see. I'll be quiet now as I leave you with this clip where I start to play around with the head's drag and counterbalance settings. As I do that, take a listen so some of the weird sounds that might be picked up by your camera when shooting with this head.
Now that we're done with the shooting, and we want to leave or change locations on the fly, this will greet you all the time. It's the dreadful mid-level spreader. Watch as I pack this tripod up, just some of the things that get snagged. It's really kind of a nuisance. Like, I'm trying to get the thing past it, and it just... I don't know, it just runs into... Ah! Gosh. Anyways, before I leave you, I wanted to share the first shot that I took with the tripod. And it was with my 18 to 135 millimeter lens at 135 millimeters. It was a very humid day, so it might affect the smoothness of the shot, but I had to share something with you guys and I will be sharing more after I use this thing for a few weeks. So make sure to subscribe here to my YouTube channel and I'll keep you updated.